All right. I've got my friend Micah Major here with me today. Micah, it is great to see you. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with us for Profi Conference. And uh, man, I'm excited to have this conversation. I know you and I've talked about this some before, but you know, this whole issue of trying to stay consistent over long periods of time is really hard for all of us. I know you're affected by a bleeding disorder. And I just thought, especially during those college years, you just graduated, some really great things are happening in your life. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you a little bit about your experience with having to go from mom and dad, really being the curator of that, that you know, the driver behind being consistent to really you having to manage it. How, how did that work for you? Man, so when I first started college, I was, was it turning 18 or already 18. Uh, and never really lived anywhere without my parents. So that was such a big jump from always being with my family to being by myself in, in a totally different city, two and a half hours away. So, I mean, just, it was figuring out what was the best way to stay on my schedule. So whether it was making sure I do it every Monday, every Friday or every Thursday, or when it's a golf tournament or writing on my dry erase board, you know, on my, on my closet, Hey, get factor on this day and this day and erase it every week and write, write whenever I need to do it. So it was just finding my schedule that was easy for me with all the activities that I was doing. Was that different schedule than what you you had done when you were living at home? Um, not really. The only thing that was different was I had, I had way more responsibilities because I wasn't at home. So right. it was all, all, it was all in me. I had to make sure I go to morning workouts, I had to go to class, had to eat, I had to eat, I had to, you know, go to practice, I had to come home, do homework. Um, and then I have, it's my, it maybe it's maybe seven o'clock at that time. So maybe go see some friends or yeah. it's just whatever. So it wasn't, it wasn't a different schedule. It was more of, I have more responsibilities now. And it was making sure that I still take care of the most important responsibility during that time, which right. was myself. Did you ever have times where you felt like, gosh, you know, I really, maybe this is all in my head. Like, I feel good. Like, do I really need to do this? Mm -hmm. I had a few of those. Yeah. And I, to be honest, I still have a few of them, but not, it's nowhere near like it used to be because, you know, maturity comes with age. And I would say the beginning of college, freshman, sophomore years, whenever it happened the most, mostly, um, yeah, freshman year, because I was, you know, in a place that I wasn't comfortable with. So I was trying to make sure, and I was making new friends. So they were always coming in my room. So just making sure that I was getting it out of the way as quick as possible. Cause I didn't want people to walk in on me and I'm getting myself a shot because it, it, it wouldn't look good. Yeah, I, I would have to make, I'm like, Hey, don't worry. This is normal for me. Um, I promise. But it was just, it was just finding the right time and um, making sure that I didn't, skip too many days or push off a couple things and I would end up missing an event because I had to go back and get back there but yeah. it all it all turned out to be well yeah and you were playing competitive sports throughout mm -hmm. school as well right tell me a little bit about that yeah so I I uh, graduated high school from Jim Springs High School and I got a scholarship to go to Louisiana College and play on their golf team which was wow. I'm, I'm not gonna say it was, an, it was I don't want to say it was a new school a new sport but it was they were starting to get better and they had a new coach, so they were, they were recruiting a lot more, and I got up there. I played golf all four years. I turned captain the end of my sophomore year, beginning of my sophomore year. I don't know when it was. I was captain from sophomore year till I graduated, but golf, there's no really, you don't need a captain. There's no hype motivational speeches that I need to give because it's individual sport, but um, yeah, we had, people don't know what goes in the golf team in college. I mean, we had morning workouts at 6 a.m., every other day sometimes it was every day uh we had practice every day at three o'clock which is normally whenever we all got out of class uh we had most of our tournaments were away we only had one home tournament so all of our tournaments were at least three hours four hours away um so traveling we traveled a week and we would leave on saturday morning and we would get back monday night early tuesday morning just depending on where it's at so traveling you know with my factor i had to make sure i had ice pack or an ice chest or something like that so it was a little bit more, a little bit went into um, planning my travel tournament. Did you feel like uncertain about, I know you mentioned earlier about your people walking in on you or something and seeing that in the dorm, but I mean, did you feel uncertain about that with your teammates? I mean, 
was that hard for you to start to process that with your the people that you're around um in the beginning i was just more nervous of telling them that i was hesitant i mean it's obviously the same thing but the guys my freshman year i became really close with um and i, I told them about it but i never really had a confuse around them thankfully um but I told them about it they knew about it and then actually all three of the people all the people that was on the team my freshman year ended up transferring so i had to go through the whole process of telling the whole team over again hey i just want to let you know this is why i carry ice or this is why i carry a little launch box with me everywhere i go um just in case something happens you know what's going on and plus i wore my medical alert so i was they knew what was going on I had my identification on me when needed, but um, yeah, it was just, I wasn't too worried about them walking on me once they knew. Yeah, I mean, was that in, you know, I, you know, I don't know how to phrase this the right way, but did you feel, you ever felt uncomfortable or embarrassed that maybe you, you had to carry around that extra thing with a lunch bag? Yeah, I, I did, and sometimes I still do, uh, but it just depends on the people that I was around. If I'm around people that I know um, comfortably, it usually it doesn't matter. Like this past weekend, I went on a, a bachelor trip with a bunch of friends to Arkansas and we're packing up the car and they're like, why do you have a, why, what's all these lunch boxes here? Because another friend had a lunch box and they're like, yeah, we all got lunch boxes. But I mean, it doesn't, it, nah, not anymore. Not really. No. How did you like overcome that nervousness though? That, that, that feeling of like almost feeling a little bit ashamed of mm -hmm. that. Like, how did you overcome that? The older I got, the more I realized that I don't really need to be because this is right. I have to live. I have to live with this. And the more I understood what hematoma was, and people would ask, I kind of was able to you know tell them about it and what it was. And oh, here, look, I have my medicine with me actually. So yeah, um, the the older I got, the more um, comfortable I was, and not really embarrassed that I got with uh, with traveling or just being around people when it came to that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I, I have found personally that I think advocating for yourself and I, when I think about that, I think about telling your story, right? So like if you're, if you're able to tell your story with your friend group, you know, it, and that, that aren't affected and you're yeah. able to sort of like overcome that hurdle, I have found that it just gets way less embarrassing. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, like, you know, sometimes I'll just, I'll tell a friend when I'm pretty early in the relationship only because yeah. I just yeah. kind of get over that, you know, and mm -hmm. that hump so that if it comes up again, because it, it does come up sometimes or they see you with your, you know, your cooler or whatever, yeah. you know, but, um, I just think that whole transition of being out from under, you know, mom and dad's, um, mm -hmm. you know, care, sometimes you can hide that stuff with mom and dad and just go, oh, it's my parents are crazy. I don't yeah. know, you yeah. know, but when you're yeah, on you're your own, it's like, you got to yeah. totally own it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that, it's just a different thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would look for specific people that are going with me. Like this past weekend, when I went on that trip, one of the guys I was going with me was is in med school to be a doctor. So I was like, hey, dude, uh, Hopefully you got some practice because in case there's an emergency, you might have to help me out with this. But um, so, yeah, just looking for specific people sometimes to cool. make me feel um, more comfortable. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever have a, a time like in school or whatever where you felt like that you kind of went too long and maybe you had some bleeds or something that you you probably could have avoided had you stayed on track? Or did you did you feel like you were able to manage pretty well? For the most part, I was able to manage it well. Um, thankfully, I haven't had a bleed in a quite a long time. Um, yeah. But there were some times that I, I stretched it maybe too long, uh, yeah. maybe like a couple of days or something like that. But for the most part, I was able to remind myself, like Micah, you can't, you can't go do anything unless until you get factor or until you get your medicine. Like I played a lot of intramural sports, like ultimate frisbee. I played basketball. I played flight. I did a lot of the ultra, uh, the intramural sports, and I was like, hey. I don't feel comfortable going out there right now. You need to get your medicine before you go out there. So talking to yourself is really not that bad of a thing after yeah. all, right? I mean, like sometimes yeah. you just got to coach yourself into think of yourself and your body like a team where you can just be mm -hmm. able to say, hey, you know what? You, you got to do this because you're not going to be able to go you know, play frisbee yeah. or whatever. You, if you don't do this, you can't go. And that's one of the things I really love about seeing guys who are more active and 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 acclimated towards sports you all it almost requires that discipline of you to stay faithful with your treatments mm -hmm. but um but i think the mental hurdle of just 
how do you stay consistent when you don't want to is yeah. hard for everybody. Uh, but I would say two things that I hear you saying is one is have something that you want to do that you look forward to. And number mm -hmm. two, coach yeah. yourself, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody says nobody knows you better than you do. And you got to be your own hype man. Yeah. Hey, I know, I know this sucks sometimes, but you gotta, you gotta make sure you're comfortable, not comfortable, but you gotta make sure you're, uh, what's the word, uh, protected. You gotta make sure you're protected so you can go do whatever you want to do, basically. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great advice. Is there any advice that you give anybody out there right now that maybe they're just struggling? I know there's a bunch of people watching this video right now thinking, man, I just, it's great that Micah is just so disciplined and that he's got that little voice in his head that tells me to do the right thing. But man, I am just feeling like I don't have the gumption to keep going. What mm -hmm. would you tell that person who's watching right now that just needs some encouragement today? It gets easier. The more you do it, the beginning, it's going to, it's going to take time and it's going to get annoying and it's going to get aggravating sometimes you might you, you might want to tell yourself hey i can go these extra two days or so until i until i get home or until i get into a place where i'm alone so i can get myself my medicine but the more you do it the the easier it gets just like they say it's almost you almost want to make it like a habit you know you got to do something 21 days in a row and then it becomes a habit you want to do your you want to make sure you're doing it consistently to where it becomes a habit and to where if you miss a day you're like oh this is why my day feels off because I didn't do my daily routine or my my weekly routine or whenever you got to get your medicine. That's so good. And like you said from the beginning, when you're getting out on your own as an independent adult, like just to be able to own it, like you said, mm -hmm. and just say, you know what, nobody else is going to do this for me. I'm just yep. going to have to own it myself, take responsibility for my own mm -hmm. health and just and just do it. If you do it, you're going to be fine. If you yep. don't, that's where you end up in trouble. So, mm -hmm. and thank you so much for sharing your story with us and being a part of this moment. I just appreciate you being willing to encourage people. And uh, I'm certain people can find you on social media and Facebook and all mm -hmm. to try to yeah. catch up with you. But uh, man, I really just appreciate you inspiring all of us to, uh, to stay consistent. Yeah, definitely. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right.